Let's stop. Let's put my soft on. Why did you stop George? That was a mistake, mate. Yeah, track position. And welcome to Workday Strategy Session. And what an interesting race the Dutch Grand Prix was from a strategic point of view. One of the biggest talking points from the race was Mercedes strategy. So we're going to take a look at how agile the Mercedes pit wall was when it came to quickly adapting to the safety car. And we're going to look at what that meant for Lewis Hamilton and George Russell's races. With me to talk through it all is Jolien Palmer and Bernie Collins. And Jolien, you were in the Netherlands. What did you make of the race? It was a good race. It was a fun race and challenging for eventual winner Max Verstappen, mainly because Mercedes' strategy from the outset was different and it pushed them all the way. George Russell equaled a career best finish. Yeah, it was a great race for them. And Bernie, as a strategist, I'm sure you were interested to hear how George and the team managed that, that call to come in when the safety car came out. Yeah, I think everyone was expecting a really straightforward race, straight out of the box, different start tyre. Mercedes threw that away. And then, you know, the safety cars at the end, really, everyone thought a lot of it was done and finished and two safety cars or a VSC and a safety car really changed it all up. It certainly did. It really spiced things up. Well, let's get straight into it then. Let's take a look at that Mercedes strategy. Let's go back to the beginning of the race then. And Bernie, why do you think Mercedes went for that one stop initially compared to Ferrari and Red Bull who were targeting a two stop? Yeah, the interesting thing is, you know, did they actually go for one stop or did they just choose the start tyre and the strategy evolved from there? So the big thing is that the top six drivers, the top three th teams, all retained two sets of medium tyres on one set of hard. Now, they need to keep one hard and one medium. So they all at least had the availability of a two-stop race. They had those two mediums available to them. Mercedes was the only one to decide to start on that medium tyre and that really set their strategy in motion. So if I just show you, this is the Mercedes one stop, is this medium, then the pit stop, you know, around the lap 30 mark, and then the hard tyre. Whereas the Red Bulls and the Ferraris all started on the soft, stopped around the 15 mark, fitted a medium, and then towards the end, the hard. And the big question mark for me comes from that hard tyre. We didn't have a lot of races previously that had ran that hard. So it was that selection process that really set it in motion for Mercedes. And Julian, were you surprised to see Mercedes start on the medium? Because it was very green, the track in Zandvoort, wasn't it? I wonder if they would have done it if they were starting higher up. But actually, their qualifying didn't go to plan. They were fourth and sixth. It was a chance for them, actually, to do something different. No one else copied them. They all went for the softs, the, the Red Bulls and the Ferraris. And I think they'd have been pretty happy at that point, looking around and seeing, actually, we're the only one here on the medium. We've got options. Bernie, that was what Mercedes were envisaging, the medium to the hard. Obviously, we then had the virtual safety car and the safety car. But if those interruptions hadn't happened, what would have happened, do you think, for Mercedes? So, sort of as Julia mentioned, they would have been fit to use their race pace to gain some track position. So, we've got, an, you know, another race trace here. We can see the dark blue line of Verstappen. He's gaining, you know, compared to everyone else in terms of lap time. But he's forced to do that pit stop. And that pit stop's really taken away time. Mercedes in the lighter blue, they're starting on the medium tyre and they run much longer. Now they gain a little bit from the slow pit stop for Ferrari, but they run this stint, very low degradation um, and run it quite long and then stop only when they're forced to by Verstappen coming through. But if we look to, you know, the dash line marks where the safety car happens, what we think would have happened beyond that point, Mercedes run this long final stint on hard. Most likely, I think, you know, there's arguments out there, but I think Verstappen would have had the pace to go past in that final stint. So I think he would have been able to overtake, particularly when you see how easy his overtake was earlier in the race. Um, but they would have beaten the Ferrari of Leclerc that they shouldn't have necessarily beaten on pace just because they don't have these two pit losses to contend with. It's close, but it also highlights how close it is, really, when you look at the first part of the race, Bernie, because... Hamilton and Russell in the light blue, they're stuck behind Sainz in the dotted red there. So they lose heaps of time actually in, just in traffic at that point. Yep. So actually in terms of just a plain strategy, the one stop was, was the right call, given how close it was at the end anyway. Yeah, and just given how well, you know, particularly, there's so much radio comms around when the Mercedes fit the hard tyre midway through the race. People are surprised at how quick it is and really surprised at how well it's doing. And that was a turning point really for that race, how good that final stint could have been for those guys. So, you know, they, they would have been in the Ferrari that they qualified well behind and shouldn't have had the pace to beat. Of course, there was a virtual safety car. So let's take a look at how Mercedes reacted to that. 
Yeah, so the virtual safety car arrived and, you know, Mercedes at this point must have been thinking Verstappen had been running along. He would have emerged behind them, but obviously the virtual safety car reduces your pit loss. So they're thinking, oh, Verstappen's now got a free pit stop. The one stop isn't going to look as strong versus a two stop. Unfortunately for Leclerc, he'd already stopped pre the virtual safety car. So he's already behind and that opens a free Um, pit window. So what we mean by that is under the safety car, you can stop for reduced loss relative to others on track. So Mercedes had the opportunity to stop both cars together, actually, fit a new medium tyre, which, as we said at the start, they had a second one in their pool ready for a two stop and then progress their strategy from there. So at this point in the race, they're thinking they've consolidated P2 and P3. The stop ones had a free pit stop, but P2 and P3 should be theirs from this point to the end of the race. Whilst Verstappen's had the free pit stop out front, the fact that Leclerc's pitted the lap before, you can see where the, the red line just drops away. Yeah. That wouldn't have meant a free pit stop at all. That would have meant they were fighting for third and fourth, taking the pit stop. Yeah. So Leclerc almost lucked in, but because he pitted the lap earlier, that takes him out the window. And uh, Mercedes, they won't be happy that Verstappen managed to, to cash in, but at least they managed to get rid of the Ferrari at that point. Then we did have a full safety car, Bernie, and Mercedes deciding to split their drivers. What did you make of those decisions? Yeah, so those decisions are really interesting. You know, that is the high pressure point of any race. So with that, we've got some some video footage here. It shows both Mercedes side by side, but we'll see a little bit how they got to their individual decisions and where that made the strategy different. So safety car, safety car, keep the dogs positive. So we'll go strap mode one. Has he got safety car window? So it's Verstappen in the pit lane, so we are staying out. Stay out, stay out. Safety car, safety car. Keep the delta positive. You're staying out. Are you sure? You don't want to throw the soft on? You're staying out. What, what happens if we put the soft on? When we fall? So be on standby, be on standby. If it's only, if it's only Leclerc, I'm happy to box. So we are splitting, you're staying out. Delta, Delta. Both of them are told, you know, regulation stuff, their safety car delta. So that is basically a reference lap time that we need to achieve behind the safety car in order to ensure that it's safer, basically, than a normal racing lap. But we can see that um, Russell's already pushing for an extra tyre. He's already pushing for the soft. The team's decision, reasonably easy at this stage. They need to wait and see what Verstappen does. Verstappen's boxing, so they know they can get both of their cars ahead. And suddenly it becomes a bit more what's on the table for us, what options are available. Um, so if we just continue to play that forward then. So stay well, close to your Delta. Stay close to your Delta. Come on, stay out. Stay out, stay out. Look, we're stopping on exit, we're stopping on exit. Stay tight. But we're stopping, stop for the soft. So it is 16 laps to go. So be close to the stopping on exit. So Delta positive. What tyre is he? So, so the Stappen on the soft tyre, he's currently behind George. So now we've reached the next bit of information, which is crucial, especially to Lewis. He knows that George is in the middle. So he suddenly, P1 of the race, he's on a relatively fresh medium tyre. He's got George in the middle and the Stappen behind. And that's really crucial for Lewis, I think, in, at this stage. How many laps? We've got uh, 15 to go. Understood. So work tyres and brakes. So Leclerc has also stopped, I imagine it'll be soft. Now, this is interesting to me in that this is the first time that the drivers have been given different information. George has been told that now also Leclerc is behind on soft. So at this stage, George knows he's got two cars behind that are quicker on race pace than him, both on soft tyres. And Lewis was never given that information about Leclerc. He was only told about Verstappen and he has George in the middle. Probably part of that, though, is because George was already proactive, wasn't he, in the, in the strategy decision on the, on the first call. So when you're, when you're a driver at this point, there's a safety car, 15 laps to go. You're in a good position. They've both been flying all race. And you're thinking, OK, this can either be make or break for the whole race here. We need to be on the right thing. Lewis is the lead Mercedes. George is just behind. And he's thinking, I could be a little bit left in the lurch here. So we've got to just think about what we can do. He's asked about Verstappen. He's mentioned Leclerc. So he's got, a, got, got the radio message back. Definitely. And then we progress to the, the next lap. 
So safety car will come through the pit lane. So you're following the safety car through the pit lane. You're not stopping. So stay in the fast Why lane. Not? Let's, let's stop. Let's put the soft on. We, I, I'm losing the tire. Let's see if we need to put the soft on. Okay, so build the gap, build the gap. Stop, 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 box, 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 box. So only George, you're stopping. So stop with your max. You're clear, so you're clear. So you can see there how it swings quite quickly. George is still pushing for the soft tyre. He knows he's got two quick cars behind him on soft. And it's, you know, totally turned a little bit by the safety car coming through the pit lane. So that means you can stop relative to others at a very reduced pit loss. It's only the time it takes you to drive in and out of your garage. So we're talking something like three and a half seconds. So there's a big saving for stopping in that situation. George was very adamant he wanted to do it. Um, he was very on top of it, and, and that's why the team ultimately decided to do it. So the big question is, should Lewis have stopped as well? Could Mercedes have pitted both of them? So we just look at this final bit from, from Lewis then. Why did you stop George? Uh, don't know, Lewis. I'll let you know. That was a mistake, mate. Yeah, track position. We had a buffer between us, so now we don't have that. Uh, copy that, Lewis. So it must be so heartbreaking. That starts with and driving into the pit lane and he sees the pit crew out so already he knows there's something happening on the other car and that's really how you know he, he sees what's what's going on that's an interesting one obviously he felt he was safe with george as a rear gunner jolian at that point as a driver are you, are you furious are you frustrated i can i can understand it because they've not communicated well across the two cars there and i guess then the big question bernie is should they have pitted lewis as well could they have double stacked them at that point when we think about stacking a car, or double stacking as you know the terminology is, that involves stopping both cars in the same team in the same lap with a very small gap between them. Most teams operate to a five to six second gap is what you need between the cars for it to be successful. That's to get one in, serviced and out so the other guy doesn't lose any time. So generally what happens under safety cars, teams open that gap a little bit from whatever it is on track. The drivers know they're aiming for around the six. So here we have a graph that shows on the red line is what happened under the VSC. So this is a gap between drivers. You can see with the red line under the VSC, it starts just above three. And gradually through, these are marshal posts along the track. So this is distance along the track. Gradually, you can see that George opens that gap to in around six and a half seconds at the point that they stop. So gradually as they're coming into the pit lane, George opens a gap. However, under the safety car, this safety car, because they didn't know they were stacking or weren't stacking, George never opens a gap, but that's his blue line here. So he just stays consistently, roughly, the same gap to Lewis. If they'd opened the gap in this instance, George would have been bringing Verstappen back with him. So not only would there have been time for Lewis to get in and out of the pit box before George, there should have been time for him to get in and out of the pit box before Max. Eesh. And that is sort of crucial, I think, to... And it's very hard on the pit wall to make those decisions live at the time, but definitely you go through a learn format. I guess one thing to say is, from the time they knew the cars were coming into the pit lane until the pit stop was only around 30 seconds. So it's quite frantic on the pit wall at that point. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of feedback. So you can totally see how, you know, we're doing the decision in perfect hindsight. It's very easy to get right now. Yeah, so 30 seconds to adapt and change. But as you say, Jolian, a great result from George Russell and great teamwork with him and his crew on the pit wall. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a career best for, for George. I still think even if they did the double stack, Lewis would have had a done a better restart than he did because of Max's straight line speed. So it's not an absolute guarantee that they'd win the race anyway. And uh, he wasn't happy. George, very happy. And uh, it's sort of how it goes really sometimes. One side of the garage leaves the race very happy and... Uh, yeah, so not so much. On to the next race very quickly. Obviously, we're heading to Monza now. A very different challenge in terms of how the circuit is laid out. Julian, what can the drivers and teams expect from this track? Again, very different circuit. Uh, it's quite a simple track in terms of driving. Chicanes, six combinations of corner, 
and nowhere near really as sort of flowing and technical as, as Zamport. So it'll be very different to drive. And again, the strategy possibilities, I think, are going to be very different to Zamport as well. How do you plan for this one, Bernie, as a strategist going into the temple of speed? <laughs> it's always a really interesting one, Monza. You know, a lot of people bring upgrades, they bring specific wings to this one. So what we're expecting at this stage um, in Monza is sort of soft and medium to win out, um, but close between the one and two stop as well. So it's going to be another interesting race from that side, I think. Lots to look forward to this weekend in Italy and you think the strategy is going to be one thing and it'll probably end up being something totally different. So we'll have lots to discuss in the final episode of the Workday Strategy Session series. My thanks to Bernie Collins and Jolian Palmer. From us all now, though, it's goodbye.